Hogan, Utah, the D. Glenn Smith Spectrum. Senior night in the Mountain West regular season finale as the Bulldogs of Fresno State take on Utah State. Hi everybody, I'm Trey Bender alongside Bill Horenda. This is the finale, two teams playing their best basketball for the last six for the Aggies. Tough here, and for Fresno State, it's been a breakthrough season. Absolutely, sizzling seven of eight wins, including five straight. Right now, it's all about maintaining momentum into the conference tournament, which is paramount. Marvell Harris, the front runner for Mountain West Player of the Year. Well, Marvell is without parallel. He's averaging 26 over his last eight games, and of course, top five in so many statistical categories in the Mountain West. The Bulldogs locking up the number two seed with a Boise State loss. As you look at the starting lineups, Cullen Russo has been sensational, emerging as a star in Mountain West play. Julian Lewis, a senior, the hot hand coming off a career high 30 points, helping out Harris. And for Utah State, two senior starters in the lineup. Trace Curitan, his first career start, and Grayson Moore, who suffered a broken foot at Colorado State, will start as well for the tip in maybe a minute or so as you look at Fresno State in the home whites and the black uniforms on senior night for Utah State. And Utah State, what a tremendous program. 20 NCAA tournament appearances. And of course, this is a tradition. If you are a senior and you're healthy, you will start. And of course, we all know, we all know how tough it is at the D. Glenn Smith Spectrum. And it'll be rocking tonight, no doubt. Fresno State, their best season since 06-07 when they went to the NIT and we are underway from Logan. And right away, a timeout called by Tim Durier. And here's the big applause for Grayson Moore. The senior who broke his foot at Colorado State, he really, was really a glue guy and uh, a great honor here on senior night to get him out on the floor. Class act, Grayson Moore and Tim Dury, the coaching staff. Tremendous courage to make it to the floor. Right away, a three on the way from Chris Smith and he misses to open things up here. This is Utah State team 10 and five on the home floor. Fresno State has already had some big conference road wins, including one at the pit against New Mexico. Marvell Harris from about 15 feet away, knocking down that jumper. What a year he's had. And it's not just about scoring for number 23. No, he has been outstanding. One of the two players in the nation in the top four in points, assists, steals, assists, to turnover ratio in minutes per game. There's a miss from Jalen Moore, the junior. In transition, Russo with the left hand. And it's tracked down by Quinn Taylor for the Aggies. Defensive possessions do not end until you secure a defensive rebound. That's certainly a key for the Aggies tonight. Two of the better shooting teams in the Mountain West Conference, and a lot of it revolves around Smith and Moore, the two guys with the basketball in the front court. Taylor on the move. And an offensive foul called on Taylor as he hooked Russo on his move to the rim. <laughs> so a little creativity by Taylor. Acknowledged by the referees, and when you're being checked by Cullen Russo, you need to bring a little extracurricular activity. Cesar Guerrero on the attack out of bounds. It will stay with the Bulldogs. Now a lot at, at stake for the Aggies. A win, and they move into the seventh seed. It would be a matchup with Air Force in the first round of the Mountain West Tournament, a team they've beaten twice this year. Yeah, and that's where they would like to be. Trey, no question about it. Basketball being so key with matchups. Tough to beat someone three times, but when you match up well, of course, you'd like to see that in Las Vegas at the conference tournament. That's Karachi Edo, the junior from Dallas, an athletic post, shot clock at five. Harris with a three. They're going to call that a two just inside the arc for the senior. Marvell Harris is in an absolute zone. Perkins the miss. Lewis snatches the rebound. They're off and running. And Taylor the rebound. So much confidence, you could sense it in the shoot around for Rodney Terry's bunch. What a terrific job he has done along with his staff to bring Fresno State back to prominence within the conference. Smith short on the three, long rebound, tracked down by Lewis, and the Bulldogs have possession. 
They've won five in a row, seven of eight, and they knocked off San Diego State at home. That was a confidence builder. Absolutely, and Trey, that all started after a loss to San Jose State. They were five and four at that juncture. And there's Karachi Edo with a bucket. He has improved each season, much like this program. They've gotten better and better. Great start for the visitors here. Karachi Edo, the avarice on the offensive class. We know about that. The countenance similar to Amari Stoudemire. Here's Curitan with a shot clock down to 12. He's going to attack. Shot clock at five, the senior on the roll, and he's fouled. A reach in on Russo, he picks up the personal. Excellent man-to-man -man defense by Fresno State. You get a good look at Russo. Very athletic, long player with a big upside. And Trey, I mentioned Marvell Harris, the other player in the country, top four in the conference. Points, assist, steals, assist to turnover ratio in minutes per game. Kay Felder at Oakland. And Harris, one of the best guards in college basketball. If you haven't had a chance to see him play, he's a complete package. And you can argue, and we have throughout the course of the year, Josh Adams at Wyoming has had a great year. But what he's done with this program and the fact they've won 21 games, he's clearly the front runner right now. And, you know, he's third in scoring in the conference, Trey, but he's also the leader in assists. So from that standpoint, he really embodies the togetherness of this Fresno State roster. They used to play with each other, now they play for each other in the words of Rodney Terry. Good pass right there, and Edo cannot finish. Here's Curitan. Moore, the trailer. Misses on the three. It's a team that shoots it pretty well from out there at 36%, best, second best in the Mountain West. And there's a miss from three from Lewis. Utah State 0 for 5 from the field here in the early going. You know, a lot of emotion in the building on senior night. Sometimes it takes a little bit just to break his sweat, get back to just the X's and O's and operating on the floor. Curitan again working that shot clock down to 10. Smith rolling to the bucket with the left hand. And he's not just a shooter, he's a scorer. And that was great intelligence. He knew he had Russo a little bit late on the help and pick and roll. He drives with alacrity to the hoop and finishes. All-conference candidate along with Moore for the Aggies. Here's Russo straightaway three. Rims out of there. And the Aggies a chance to tie on this trip. 10 and five at home this year. 10 of their 15 wins on the floor in what has been traditionally one of the top college environments in the West through the years. Curitan for three. And Russo the rebound. Look at him start to break at 6-9. Russo all the way to the rim, and that shows off his versatility. Yeah, I mean, Russo in transition, again with great recognition that there was no basket protection by the Aggies, and he takes advantage. He has really emerged as a star, a versatile four. He's been called a point forward, passes the ball well, and obviously handles it well, as you just saw. Gets as much satisfaction of dishing as swishing. Darius Perkins, short, and there's Russo with the rebound. Pass ahead to Edo. Edo's gonna attack. Contact, and the bucket counts. Curitan was there, no call, they play on. Fresno State doing a great job of getting out in transition. Controlling class on the defensive end. And he, if Rodney Terry has said it, our best offense begins with good defense. Here's Taylor. And knocked away by Harris. He is the Mountain West Steels leader. Got a hand on that one. Lewis. And he's... Out of bounds, and a turnover by Fresno State. Great start, though, for the Bulldogs, who are really playing with confidence. 197 steals, second in school history. It's not just about his offense. He's given them some of that here in the early going. And the Bulldogs have a 10-3 lead here in Logan. Rodney Terry's done a tremendous job. Off to a quick start here in Logan. 
his second 21 season in the last three years. They were a CBI finalist a couple years ago. This year, have higher hopes at 21 and nine. They've beaten San Diego State. They almost beat the Aztecs down there, and he's got this team peaking at the right time. He really does, Trey, and you look at Marvell Harris, Guerrero, Edo, guys that have been around Watson. They've battled through multiple injuries this season. And again, after that loss against San Jose State, they were five and four, seven of eight since then, digging in, playing great basketball at the right time. Sometimes you need that wake-up call, and the Spartans gave him that. There is no question about that. Elston Jones, a big man, has checked in. The Arizona product from Goodyear. Shot clock down to seven. Lou Evans, two on the shot clock. Moore with the three, short. One for their first nine from the field. Foul called on Fresno State. I'll try in the team's first meeting, a 75-68 win at the Save Mart Center. Both teams struggled from three. Utah State, 24%, 6 of 25, just 2 of 14 in the second half. Fresno State just 33%, 7 of 21 overall. But Fresno State, 18 to 0 points off of turnovers. So those, again, are numbers to pay attention to tonight. Both teams struggling early from downtown. Fresno State has the ability to score the ball from the perimeter, but when they get points in transition like that, they are a tough out. Uh, and when they're able to, again, start with that defense, Rodney Terry, always a defensive-minded guy. Here's Evans on the inside. Oh, oh, oh. And a much-needed bucket for the Aggies. It's 10-5. Evans, the Tulsa transfer, a forward with range, going inside there. Russo thought about it. Intermediate jumper instead, he's along with that one. Shane Rector's now on the floor, and he's been a catalyst off the bench at the point guard position. Evans for three, got it. He's a 35% shooter out there. First three point field goal for either team here in the first half. Evans providing some offense for the Aggies. As you say, Trey, very timely early in this one. Harris checked by Jones. He'll drop it on the block for the big man, Carter. Russo fills the lane in the bucket. Slow rotation. And of course, you've got a mouse in the house situation with Russo and Rector. Rector out of the Bronx. And again, Fresno State, just great recognition and interior passing that time provided by Carter. Different look there, a couple bigs connecting inside, and there's the runner from Rector, and that bounces off in the hands of Jamel Taylor, the sophomore from Los Angeles who has provided a spark in conference play for the Dogs. Another example of the depth of the Bulldogs. Yeah, I mean, they've got 10 guys. They, they were pretty comfortable playing when you look ahead to the tournament. Ellison, a defensive-minded guy in the drive. Russo for three. And a foul called on Evans. Three free throws coming. Now, Russo sold this quite well. It looked like Evans may have got him in the facial region. Russo sold it, and he'll be the beneficiary going to the line. And a timeout, 11.48 to go. 12-8 Fresno State off to a good start on the road here in Logan, Utah. Lou Evans on the interior with the bucket, and then showing his range from the outside. Five of the Aggies' points, they trail by four. Tim Duryea's team has battled back after a slow start. They're within four here. First season at the helm, 14 years as Stu Morrill's assistant, and expectations are so high here. This is a program that has averaged 24 wins, Sixth best in the nation in win percentage since 2000. But he's starting to put his stamp on this program here. Yeah, he really is. He's matched Stu Marl's rookie season as far as win total goes. Losing Colette unexpectedly. Uh, certainly uh, filling that gap has not been easy. But we've seen Utah State in an up and down fashion, Trey. And again, playing well now, having won two straight four of their last six. When they're good, they can be really good. There's a play by Terrell Carter, 6'10", 285. He gets it down there, it's over, 14-8. <laughs> Terrell Carter is shooting 58%, 28 of his last 48 field goals heading into tonight. Good inside out and ball movement, and the jumper knocked down by Julian Perry. Here's a guy that Durier feels is so important. When he plays well, 
especially shooting the basketball, they're a very dangerous team. Yeah, that was your trenching, one of your trenching questions at shoot-around, Trey. Who else has to step up? They're 6-1 and one on the Aggies when Perry is in double figures. And Perry got a hand on that shot by Lewis, forcing the block. And Perry again, got a couple of them. He had 19 in their 96-point outing at Colorado State. He's off to a quick start. And Durier mentioned he was slightly under the weather, thought may, that may help him today, slowing him down. The game slowing down, but the production skyrocketing for Perry early. Bulldogs going deep into their bench. Ellison is tied up by Rector, and the possession error will stay with the Bulldogs. Inspired effort from Utah State here over the last couple minutes to draw even. Great kick out as well by Elston Jones. Gotta love those big guys that can have that vision, recognition. It's also a reflection of good coaching, looking opposite. That ball in multiple quadrants, so difficult to defend. Both of these clubs are good passing teams. They really rely on the jump shot, the drive and kick mentality. Here's a long free from Harris, and he throws up an air ball. Right, you do not see that very often. Make note of that, because Harris does not look that bad from the perimeter at once every, what, couple months. Exactly, to the delectation of the Aggie faithful. Utah State, Tim Durie throwing a little zone out of that out of bounds play. And Fresno State unable to execute. The Bulldogs are playing mostly man. They'll mix it up the zone from time to time. Moore on the interior, bank won't go. Jones the offensive rebound, and he's fouled. Now you've got Moore, a guy who averages a, averages 15 points per game, has yet to score. And you gotta admire his aggressive nature. And then Elston Jones just attacking the offensive glass. And he's rewarded. Here's a kid that's gonna get better. Big body, left-hander, their only true low post guy. But remember, he's only a sophomore, played limited last year, and he only played seven games his senior year as Carter will go to the bench. You can't teach size, right? Absolutely, and I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to be behind the line and Carter at the pregame meal. <laughs> well, Jones isn't, isn't a small guy either. And he looked good on that free throw, and it's a Aggies two-point lead. Exactly. Big and skilled, Trey. Those are the uh, qualities that both Jones and Carter possess. See the run over the last minute and a half. Sam Bittner into the game. Freshman from Las Vegas, three from Guerrero misses the mark, and Jones the rebound. Momentum clearly on the home team side now. Jones against Bittner has a mass matchup advantage, misses the shot. Goes and gets to the rebound. Perry. Bulldogs have gone cold. Harris on the attack, and he's fouled. Harris is a complete package, and Coach Terry raving about how he affects the game in so many ways. Yeah, I mean, you know, here he hasn't scored in a while. Trey comes off the air ball against the zone, but he gets a nice take to the basket. And you're right, you know, leading the conference in assists. In assist to turnover ratio with the ball in his hand so frequently. Oodles of minutes as well leading the conference, 38 and a half per game. 17 20 point games. And he is on pace to become the all time scoring leader in Fresno State history. We'll probably get there. Uh, needed 31 tonight. And uh, if he doesn't get it here, he'll get in the Mountain West tournament. Great history at Fresno State as well. Most recently, Paul George. Tremendous players through the years. Perry in attack mode. Short, it's his own rebound. Fresno State started out so well, defensive class, but now Utah State is absolutely attacking the offensive class, just quicker to the basketball. Eight on the shot clock as Smith will trigger it in. Smith for three. Got it. Right 19-15, Utah State. 
an 11-1 run over the last 248. That was great execution on the out-of-bounds play and more with a terrific screen. Timeout Bulldogs with 8.49 to go and Rodney Terry trying to rally his troops. Now, sometimes it's human nature. You know you've got the two seed locked up in the Mountain West Tournament, but he wants to keep the, the ball rolling. He wants to keep that momentum, the good feeling going heading into the postseason. Yeah, you know what, Trey, that cannot be underestimated, particularly as we see Terry getting into his guys here. When you've played so well, you don't want to squander it. The seeding is what it is for Fresno State. However, you still want to be playing your best basketball. You do not want to take a step back. And of course, this is a very difficult place to play. Fresno State has deep respect for that. But again, as wide open as college basketball has been this season, Mountain West, no exception. You want to bring your best, come into Las Vegas on a high note. Five game winning streak, winners of seven of their last eight. We saw them win the double overtime, wild one against UNLV. Inside, Edo, and that, that's one way to attack it inside out. They have that size advantage in there with Edo and Russo and Carter, and they get a bucket the easy way that time. There you go, and of course, you mentioned that double overtime victory. Edo went out with a bad wrist, missed three games, came back. Record with the answer. Energy guy off the bench, their leader in assists and steals. Yeah, had been in a starting role. Embrace coming off the bench. Athletic, kinetic. Got a little Kemba Walker in his game. He's from the Bronx, Walker from Brooklyn. They have that similarity. Well, great pass by Harris, and Russo is fouled. And he's a little shaken up as he hits the floor there. Yeah, that was a hard foul by Jones. And you know, we had an expression back in Jersey, you want to play hopscotch, go down the block. It's the Mountain West. You got to be tough. And you know, Trey, it's interesting too, listening to Rodney Terry about how competitive the Fresno State practices had been during the season. Of course, he's scaling it down now. But that is the reason why they are have so much depth, because they've pushed each other. Guys have been ready. They've stepped up when called upon. And when you put your stamp on a program you know as a defensive coach a lot of that is focus energy all those kind of things you can bring the defense from game to game the offense may not be there it's portable you're exactly right Wolf Clyde Frazier was on with Mike and Mike ESPN radio this week he said the one thing you can improve without any acquisition of course NBA is defense it will keep you in games you can hang around and it's so true and they have improved their defense during this five game win streak under eight minutes to go. From the corner, Moore. And he ties it up. Or he gives him a six point lead with that shot. 24 18, Aggies. Now, Moore had said the great screen for Chris Smith. And sometimes just the little things can get you to percolate. And we see Moore now producing offensively. You see the three point numbers. The Aggies have excelled in that area. On the drive, it's Harris. Uh, they're going to call a walk. Turns it over. Harris getting an explanation. Randy McCall, Jimmy Cassis, Casey McClellan, our officials tonight. And Utah State has the momentum right now, leading by six at the 724 mark. So, so the Aggies trying to win their 11th at home. Getting inspired play from their senior Smith and their point guard Rector up six. The Aggies have hit their last three field goals and they have their biggest lead of the first half in front of Fresno State 24-18. Tim Durier, first season at the helm, of course, under Stu Morrill, one of the top programs in the West, as you see the rundown in the history between these two schools. But the Bulldogs won the first meeting in Fresno in a, a good game, as you mentioned, by seven. Their defense was key in that one. And Utah State shot 24% from three in that loss. Right now, they're five of 11, 46% early from downtown. Moore missing that one as he tried to bank it home. Harris attacking and rolls it in there. Harry was there, bumped off the ball, and Harris showing the physical nature of his game. 
Now, the Yankees had held Harris to one point over the last seven minutes. So, obviously, Fresno State trying to get him involved with more touches. Seven now for Harris. And he's Uncontested to the basket. The Sacramento product out of Center High School in Yuba Junior College. With the extension and the dunk to the delight of the UC, excuse me, of the Utah State Aggies faithful. Lewis. And a foul called on the Aggies here on the drive. It goes on Perry. That's the first at the 648, 623 mark here is the Aggies maintaining this lead. Somebody missed their assignment there. No one stayed near the rim. Yeah, and you know what? Harris was aggressive on ball, got beat, and Russo just late with rotation, Trey. You're right. Chris Smith taking advantage. Juice Lewis, the fifth-year senior, the Texas transfer, and he has been as hot as you can be coming into this game. A career-high 30 against Colorado State, 21 at New Mexico. That's a good sign for this team heading into postseason. Trey, he's made 11 threes in his last two games. Prior to that, he made 10 all season, did Lewis. So he's really starting to uh, produce and play at a very high level for Fresno State. Splits the free throws there. Five-point game as we near the six-minute mark here. Aggies were one for their first eight from the field. They have found the shooting touch of late. Here's Smith against Harris. Perry. The sophomore giving them some offense. They're up seven. Yeah, good sign when Perry is producing. Got to give Utah State a lot of credit after that slow start offensively. Paul Watson has checked into the game. Here's Guerrero with a long jumper. And Smith the rebound. Guerrero almost had the steal. It will stay with Utah State. And you mentioned, Trey, earlier the slow rotation. Now, Smith, of course, is number one in three-point field goal percentage in the conference. So therefore, Marvell Harris is, is struggling to close out to him. And very intelligently, Smith puts it to the deck for the dunk prior possession. Here is Smith, who had 35 against Colorado State early in the conference season. Driving it, missing it. Tip won't go. They get another opportunity. Perry for three. In and out on that one. The iron unkind. Here's Lewis. And Evans has it for the Aggies. And right now, Utah State winning those 50-50 balls. Yeah, they really won that battle, Trey, particularly after the first media break. You see if they can use the quick, uh, step quicker. It's a good little UCLA, a little pro set here by Utah State. And more the finish and one. And he fights one And there's the two all-conference candidates hooking up. Moore and Smith means so much to this offense. Yeah, it, they really do. And again, they ran a little UCLA cut, the pro set, old school style. Chris Smith finding Moore. And again, Moore had just made that three late. His offense was slow here tonight, but he is starting to pick things up as well, the junior. Five points, couple assists for Jalen Moore. Fills the stat sheet. Leading scorer last year as a sophomore. His dad, Jimmy, played at Utah State in the 70s. We saw his brother, Grayson, unfortunate broken foot. He's on the sidelines cheering on his younger brother. Yeah, local products getting it done. Mentioned Papa Bear, very proud, of course. Edo, front iron. Biggest lead for the Aggies, trying to build on it here. Four for three. And Taylor kept that alive. Evans blocked. Evans the ball. And he'll head to the free throw line. They're quicker. There's a sense of urgency here on senior night. Now, there's good basket protection. However, it comes after an offensive rebound and then another rebound by Evans. So from that standpoint, Trey, it's been open season for Utah State. They have taken advantage of the offensive class in a significant way. That'll be a big topic of conversation for Rodney Terry and his crew. Salt Lake City product. 
giving the Yankees their biggest lead at 13. Paul Watson missing on the three, gets it back. Lewis, not there. It's all bouncing the Yankees' way here. Smith is fouled on the floor. Foul's on number four, Edo. Good take by Chris Smith eight. to the basket. And Trey, here's why. Oh, gee. No, it's a one on one now the rest of the way. Here's why a halftime lead is significant. For Utah State, they're 0 and 10 when they trail the half. They're 15 to 3 when they lead at the half. Those losses come to UNLV, Boise, and New Mexico. Now, Conversely, Fresno State has won six games when trailing at the half. It was six and seven. Fourteen and one on the Bulldogs when leading at the half. So we'll see how this plays out over the final 404 with Utah State in control right now with the steering wheel. Smith getting a couple free throws. 17 fouls now on the Bulldogs. And this game's slipping away now for the visitors. Down 15 at the four-minute mark. They have missed their last five field goals and two of their, they've only made two of their last 10 from the field. 9-0 run for the Aggies. Harris, air ball. Well, going to the zone has really stunted Fresno State offensively. Great adjustment by Coach Durier and his staff. And immediate timeout, 3.43 to go. It's all Utah State leading by 15. A 10-0 run over the last two and a half minutes on senior night. The Bulldogs on a 2.42 scoring drought, down 15, and Chris Smith leading the Aggies with nine points, all-conference candidate, one of the top three-point shooters in the Mountain West Conference has not disappointed. And when you get Moore and Smith both going, that's a pretty good one-two punch. Yeah, it really is. Inside, outside. And of course, uh, for Smith, averaging 16 points per night, he's ninth in the conference. Number three in field goal percentage at 50%. We talked about his three-point field goal percentage prowess leading the conference at 48%. Moore has six points, and the Aggies have their biggest lead as we near halftime. Trey, we both spotted it simultaneously, probably you before me. 10-2, second chance points, Utah State. Perkins from the corner, and it's all Aggies. It's the team that has beaten New Mexico here. They've been a much different team at home in a really good environment here in Logan. Jamel Taylor with the answer from the left wing. Taylor shooting it at 52% from beyond the arc in Mountain West play. Yeah, Fresno State really needed that too. They were kind of reeling here. And Perkins, another guy with Smith who's just been a staple in the starting lineup since he's arrived in Logan. Evans, Smith keeps it alive on the baseline. Tough shot. And Carter has the rebound. Final two and a half minutes, very big for both squads, particularly Fresno State. Can they cut this deficit? They left Russo alone. Taylor another three, and he's hit a couple of them. And this is a guy that has found his stroke. The Washington transfer spent a year with the Huskies, and he's their future. He's only a sophomore. Big on the road. Offensive foul called on Perkins. And who picks up the charge? Taylor again. Draining threes. And doing it on the defensive end. There's a silver lining for Fresno State, and Rodney Terry's looking for those right now. Six times this team has found a way to get wins when trailing at the half. It shows character, resolve, resilience, maturity, mental toughness. They're going to need all of it here in this feral environment at Utah State. Jones reaching in is going to pick up the foul there as Russo had it on the block. Second on Elston Jones. 17 foul as the Bulldogs are now in the bonus with the one and one And I mean, eight NCAA tournament appearances by Utah State since 2020 overall. The job Stu Morrill did here 
great tradition in history. Durier taking the baton. Yeah, they have really been good here. And again, Tim Durier mentioning what's at stake. A win, and they lock down the seventh seed, and they get another date with Air Force. And he sees that as very favorable, not just for the matchup, favorable matchup with the Falcons, but you stay on the opposite side of the bracket from San Diego State, and he thinks that's important as well. Yeah, and of course, the Aztecs continuing to thrive that plus 9.1 scoring margin leading the conference. 8-0 run from the Bulldogs here. Shot clock at 10 for more. And yeah. the 15-footer. Great move by Moore, excellent pull up. Recognition of the opportunity to pull the trigger mid-range off the dribble. Not easy to do, but part of his repertoire. Harris. It'll go to the Aggies. Here's a stat that Aggies fans will love to hear. When they score 40 points at halftime, they are 9-0. They've eclipsed that mark here in the first half. <laughs> Russo picks the pocket of Taylor and finishes on the other end. This kid is a special player, but he's just been teed up. Now, player safety is paramount. Now, to me, we'll have to take a look at this again. I think here, Russo was not sure Rector was trailing him. Personally, I would not have called that. And again, it's a tough judgment call by the officials. Randy McCall and his crew, terrific. But I didn't get the feeling that Russo was trying to show anyone up yet. Evans closing Rector behind him. But again, that's life on the road. Yeah, you probably don't call that at the Save Mart Center. <laughs> And Chris Smith, a chance to cash in now after the technical. Hits the free throw. 11 point game and the Yankees will have possession here. A minute to go first half. Great response from Utah State after they made just one of their first eight from the field. They're down 10 free track early at the first media break. Great comeback. Moore over to Taylor. That's not his game. He's going to drive it. Reverse layup. Misses. And Russo brings it into the front court. Now they got a chance to get to single digits here. But a seven second differential. Game clock, shot clock. Harris for three. Off the mark, he's been cold. Rector, and Harris got back to knock that away. And that would have been a Smith layup on the other end. That was good recognition by Harris, doing the little things. Not hanging his head over the missed free throw. Some of the recent frustrations here. And you're absolutely right, Trey. That would have been an easy dunk for Smith. Evans will come in for Jones here. Now, if the Aggies choose, they can hold for the last shot. I think you do here, unless you get a quick hitter and an easy layup or dunk. Why not? You're at home. You're up 11. Don't let the Bulldogs get this into a single-digit situation. As you, Trey, on the case, intelligently mentioned just a couple minutes ago. Rector at the controls. Eight seconds to work with. Gets the high screen. Knocked away by Taylor. Harris picks it up with three. Pulls up for three. Back iron. That would have been a big shot for the Bulldogs. It will be a 11-point lead at the break for Utah State. So what can you say? Utah State down 10-3. They bounce back. Of course, they're 15-3 and when they lead at the half. Fresno State has won six games when trailing at the half, six and seven on this campaign. So we'll see who can dig in over the next 20 minutes. Chris Smith with 10 points to lead Utah State on senior night. Moore has eight, an 11-point lead. 